Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will teach you a problem related to Francis turbine. Here is the question. A Francis turbine with an overall efficiency of 75% is required to produce 148.25 kilowatt of power. It is working under a head of 7.62 meter. The peripheral velocity is equal to 0 0.26 times of square root of 2 gh and the radial velocity of lowered inlet is 0 0.96 times of root of 2 gh. The wheel runs at 150 rpm and the hydraulic losses in the turbine are 22 percent of the available energy. Assuming radial discharge, determine number 1 the guide blade angle, number 2 the wheel vane angle at inlet, number 3 diameter of the wheel at inlet and number 4 width of the wheel at inlet. So this is the question. Here we have to design the turbine. So we just have to find the guide blade angle which is acting at the inlet tip and then the vein, vein, uh, wheel vane angle at the inlet, dia at the inlet as well as width at the inlet. All the uh, factors has to be found with respect to the inlet tip of the turbine here. So now let us write the data that is given to us. Here a Francis turbine is given which is working under a head of 7.62 meter. So let us consider H, capital H be the head on turbine that is given as 7.62 meter and it is working with a overall efficiency of 75 percent. So here a seven overall efficiency is represented with the letter eta naught which is given as 75 percent and the turbine produces a power of 148.25 kilowatt. So let us consider the power which is generated by the turbine is a shaft power. So that, that will be considered as SP which is given as 148.25 kilowatt. And then the peripheral velocity as well as the velocity of flow both are given with the formula itself. So the peripheral velocity is nothing but the wheel velocity and we usually represent our wheel velocity as u1 and that is given by the formula 0 0.26 times of square root of 2 gh whereas velocity of flow at the radial uh, at inlet of the tip is given as vf1. We usually represent velocity of flow at inlet as vf1 and that is given by the formula 0 0.96 square root of 2 gh where h represents the head on turbine that is given as 7.62 meter. Then apart from this the speed at which the turbine is working is also given to us which is 150 rpm. So let us consider capital N be the speed of the turbine that is of 150 rpm. Then here the losses which is taking place in the turbine is also given and that is given as 22 percent of the available energy. That means the total head at which the turbine is working is 7.62 meter. Once the jet hits the turbine, so there is some losses which is occurring uh, within the flow and that is of 22 percent of this. So here instead of giving the hydraulic energy, sorry, instead of giving you the hydraulic efficiency, they have given you the head at which the turbine is working and also the losses at which the turbine is working. So here from these two data we had to find the hydraulic efficiency of the turbine. So now what are all the things that we had to find? So let us name it in the next line. So we need to find the guide blade angle and the guide blade angle is represented with the symbol alpha. Then we need to find the wheel vane angle at the inlet which is usually represented with the symbol theta. Then we had to find the diameter of the wheel at the inlet. So let us consider capital D be the dia as we are doing it in the inlet tip we need to put it as D1. So similarly we had to consider we had to we have also find we had to also find the width of the velocity uh, wheel here and that is again with respect to the inlet tip and that is usually represented with the letter B. We usually represent width with the letter B as we are doing it for the inlet tip we put it as we will consider it as B1. So these are all the things that we have to find now. Let us start doing this. Let us first find the peripheral velocity which is nothing but the wheel velocity and that is given by the formula 0 0.26 root of 2 gh 
Here, we just have to substitute the value of h that is given as 7.62. And then on simplifying the whole equation, we will be getting the value of peripheral velocity or the velocity of wheel as 3.179 meter per second. Similarly, we have one more velocity here and that is the velocity of flow at the inlet tip. So that is given by the formula. Vf1 is given by the formula 0 0.96 root of 2gh. Again, we need to substitute the value of g and h here. So the value of g is always 9.81 meter per second square and h here is 7.62. So let us substitute it and simplify it. On simplifying, we will be getting a value of V of 1 as 11.738 meter per second. Now, apart from this, so there is a condition that is given to us. So in the question, it is clearly said that, so the flow, assuming a radial flow, see, the condition which is given to the Francis turbine is we had to assume the radial discharge which is taking place in the turbine. So if this is so, then for the radial type of discharge, the turbine uh, constants such as Vw2 will be equal to 0 here and then Vf2 will be equal to V2. That means the absolute velocity which is acting at the outlet tip will be directly equal to the velocity of flow at the outlet tip by making the velocity of wheel at, of jet as zero here. So this is the condition if we assume the discharge as radial at both the inlet as well as uh, at the outlet tip here. So now, let us consider this condition for our calculation. Now, let us keep it the condition as it is. As I said, instead of giving the hydraulic efficiency, they have given you the total head as well as the head loss which is occurring in the turbine. So now with those two data, we had to find the hydraulic efficiency. So to find that, we usually represent hydraulic efficiency with the symbol eta h and that is given by the formula in, in terms of head. That is given by total head which is acting at the inlet minus of hydraulic losses which is occurring in the turbine that divided by again total head. So the total head is your h and that is given by the value 7.62. So let us keep it as 7.62 or else if you want you just keep it as total head as h as it is. Minus of hydraulic energy is clearly given as 22% of the available energy. If you go on reading the question once, in the question it is clearly said that assuming uh, the hydraulic losses in the turbine are 22% of the available energy. And here, if we consider H as our available head or the available energy, then the hydraulic losses will be considered as 22% of H. So to is, is it, it is in terms of 22 percentage. Let us divide 22 with 100 and let us keep it in terms of decimals here. So 22 by 100 gives you 0 0.22 times of H that divided by total head is again h. Let us try to simplify this. 1 minus 0 0.22 gives you 0 0.78 times of h divided by h. As you are having both h terms on numerator and denominator, let us cancel it. Let, you will get a value of 0 0.78. As we usually represent efficiency in terms of percentage, we need to convert this in terms of percentage by multiplying our value with 100. So let us multiply 0 0.78 with 100. On multiplying, you will get 78% of your hydraulic efficiency. Now, we got the value of hydraulic efficiency. Let us find the remaining terms. So now, we know that hydraulic efficiency is given in terms of Vw1 and U1 as Vw1 U1 divided by GH1. Here, we had to find the value of Vw1, that is the velocity of the wheel at the inlet tip. So if we know Vw1, then only we can find the values of theta, alpha, as well as B and D. So for that purpose, we are making use of the equation of eta h as Vw1 u1 divided by gh1 h. Here, eta h, just now we got the value of eta h. You keep it in terms of decimal, that is 0 0.78 which is equal to Vw1 itself is unknown. Multiply this by U1. U1 represents your peripher peripheral velocity that you have found in the very first step. 
you have got a value of 3.179 you just put the value here that divided by g is 9.81 and your h is 7.62 so now on simplifying this we will be getting a value of vw1 as 18.341 meter per second so you you just have to cross multiply this on cross multiplying you get 0.78 into 9.81 into 7.62 after multiplying that value divide that with 3.179 so now after dividing you will get the final value as 18.341 meter per second so that gives you the velocity of wheel at the inlet here so now to find uh, the guide blade angle as well as the vane wheel angle we had to re refer the velocity triangle at the inlet tip and this is how the velocity triangle of the francis turbine at the inlet tip look like so here you are having v1 you will be having vf1 you will be having v vr1 you will be having u1 and also vw1 so here the velocity which is making from the starting point till the end point of the velocity triangle that is usually represented as vw1 which is nothing but your velocity of wheel and then the angle the velocity that is traveled by in between the absolute and the relative velocity is nothing but your peripheral velocity which is u1 and that is with respect to inlet tip and then the first inclined length represents your absolute velocity and in between absolute and the uh, velocity of flow you will be getting the relative velocity here so now this velocity of flow Uh, velocity of absolute velocity is acting at an angle of alpha with respect to horizontal similarly this relative velocity is acting at an angle of theta with respect to horizontal here so now by considering this velocity triangle we need to find the values of alpha and theta so let us start with finding the value of alpha to find the value of alpha we have to consider a triangle abd so let us consider this so that alpha is nothing but your blade angle now let us consider the triangle al abd at b the alpha is making and mention the remaining velocities with, which is acting within the triangle so b ab represents the absolute velocity ad represents the velocity of flow and bd represents the velocity of wheel so now we got the values of vf1 vf1 that you got in the formula itself in the very second step you will be getting the value of vf1 there and just now we have found the value of vw1 from the hydraulic efficiency so now as we know the opposite side and the adjacent side for the angle alpha here we need to make use of t tan here so now from triangle abd tan alpha will be written as opposite side by the adjacent side so the opposite side is 11.738 that divided by adjacent side value is 18.341 so now as you want to find the value of alpha here you just have to do the tan inverse of value let us do this shift tan open the bracket 11.738 divided by 18.341 close the bracket so you will be getting 36.618 degree if you want to keep it in terms of degree seconds you need to press this button so that gives you the value of alpha 32 degree 37 minutes so that completes the guide blade angle now to find the second wheel vane angle we had to make use of the second triangle that is triangle acd from this triangle we can find the value of theta so let us make use of this triangle now so now if we consider triangle acd the angle which is making at the point c is given as theta the side ac represents vr1 ad represent vf1 and cd represent vw1 minus u1 because here the side bd total bd is given by vw1 and bc is given by u1 now on subtracting the total velocity with u1 you will be getting the remaining velocity as vw1 minus u1 so now again we know the values of vf1 we know the value of vw1 as well as u1 that means we know the opposite side as well as the adjacent side for the angle theta here again we have to make use of tan 
So on making use of tan trigonometric function, our tan theta is written as opposite side that is Vf1 divided by adjacent side that is Vw1 minus U1. Now you substitute the values of all the three velocities here. Vf1 is 11.738 that divided by Vw1 is 18.341 minus of U1 we got it as 3.179. Then later let us simplify this. So on simplifying we will be getting a value of 37 degrees. So let us see this. Shift tan, you will get tan inverse. Open the bracket 11.738 divided by again open the bracket 18.341 minus 3.179. Close double bracket at the end. Put is equal to. I am getting so 37.746. If you want, you can keep this as your value or else let us convert it in terms of degree and minutes. So you will be getting the value of theta as 37 degree 44 minutes. So that gives you the value of wheel vane angle which is acting at the inlet. Now let us move to the next case. So in the third case, we had to find the diameter of the wheels. For finding this, uh, we had the formula for the perif peripheral velocity in terms of speed is given by u is equal to pi dn by 60. As we are considering the peripheral velocity at the inlet if we need to consider this as u1 and d as our d1. Now we have u1 and we know n, n is the speed of the turbine that is given in the question itself. So let us substitute here. Let us keep the equation in the form of d1. D1 will be is equal to on cross multiplying you will be getting U1 into 60 divided by pi into n where the value of U1 is 3.179 into 60 divided by pi into n is 150 rpm. Now on simplifying this we will be getting the value of diameter of the wheel which is acting on the inlet as 0 0.404 meter. So that completes the third part. So let us move to the last case. At the end, we had to find the width of the wheel which is acting at the inlet. To find that, we had to first find the discharge which is taking place in the turbine. So as the discharge is not given in the question, for finding the discharge, we had to make use of the formula of overall efficiency here. So overall efficiency is uh, represented as it is the ratio between the shaft power to the working power. So where the shaft power of the turbine is given in the question, that is of 148.25 which was in terms of kilowatt. Let us multiply that with 1000 in order to keep this value in terms of watt. Then divide that with the working power formula is given by rho g into qh. Where eta naught that is the overall efficiency was given as 75%. So let us keep it in terms of decimal. 75 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.75. That is equal to. Let us keep the shaft power value as it is. Divide that with rho. Rho represents the density of water which is 1000 kg per meter cube. And then G represents the acceleration due to gravity which is of 9.81. Q itself is unknown. Keep Q as it is. And H represents the head at which the turbine is working and that is given as 7.62. Now on simplifying the whole thing, we will be getting the value of Q as 2.644 meter cube per second. So that is the discharge which is acting in the turbine. Now with this discharge we had to find the width of the wheel. Now the formula for the discharge for the Francis turbine is given by pi d1 b1 into vf1. So this is particularly with respect to inlet because I am naming this as 1 here. So if you want to find the discharge or if you want to keep the value of discharge for the outlet then you need to make it as 2 2 2 for all the three variables. So here we know the value of q that is of 2.644 into pi keep it as it is. D1 just not we got the value of D1 as 0 0.404 and into B1 itself is unknown. V1 represents the velocity of flow at the inlet that we got in the very first step that is of 11.738. Now on simplifying the whole equation we will be getting the value of B1 as 0 0.177 meter. So that completes the problem.